Good morning, everyone. The Delaware County Commissioner meeting for May 14, 2018 is now in session. Would you stand join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good morning. To my right is uh, Vice President Commissioner Barb Lewis, and to my left is fellow Commissioner Jeff Benton. Our clerk today is Jennifer Walraven, and our administrator is Mike Cromer. With that, let's begin. Resolution number 18-513, in the matter of approving the electronic record of proceedings from regular meeting held May 10th, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-513. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. We do not have any public comment or elected official comment today, so that brings us to item number four, resolution number 18-514. In the matter of approving purchase orders and announced certificates and payments of warrants in batch number CM APR 0511. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-514. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 18-515. In the matter of approving travel expense requests. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-515. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 18-516. In the matter of canceling the commissioner's session scheduled for Thursday, June 21st, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-516. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Resolution number 18-517. In the matter of authorizing the use of a procurement card for the auditor's office. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. George Keitza, Delaware County Auditor. Uh, commissioners, this is a request for a procurement card to be issued to Tina Archangel, uh, one of our accountants. Uh, we are reassigning some duties, and uh, Tina will be taking over the responsibility for the P card for or the procurement card um, for the uh, fiscal section of the auditor's office. And Linda O'Rourke, who has the current card will be releasing that because she will be actually part of the control internal control procedure in reviewing uh, procurement cards. We're just some just transitioning from one to that, another. That's exactly right. Any questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion 18-517. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Resolution number 18-518, in the matter of approving a contract between the Board of Delaware County Commissioners, the Delaware County Sheriff's Office, and ADP LLC for a timekeeping and scheduling software for the Delaware County Sheriff's Office. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. Leslie Armstrong with Delaware County Sheriff's Office. Um, bringing a contract before you today for ADP and uh, Delaware County Sheriff's Office. This is going to be used for our timekeeping and scheduling software. Um, the cost is a little over 47000 for and that includes our implementation as well as the uh, monthly occurrence. Um, currently, we do everything manually, um, including timesheets. Um, we, have a, we have a very elementary scheduling system. This will give us an opportunity to be able to view across the board um, by different sergeants, captains, supervisors, and such as to scheduling um, so it can be delegated amongst other, um, other parties so that everybody can see it across the board. It will also allow us to get rid of all of our paperwork. I was actually going to bring you down our stack of payroll as to what that looks like. Um, our primary reason is we did find that ADP is the best fit for our very, very, um, our, our five aggressive uh, bargaining units that we um, have to address each rule based upon what type of employee they are, what shift they work. And um, so we'll be building rules into that um, kind of work and coinciding with ADP as we walk through that. So questions? It's an extensive contract. It is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, the time frame, it, it, it's from now until the end of next year? Uh, yes, it goes through 1231 of 19. So primarily we'll be working towards implementation this year. 
um, our first kind of um, measurement is we're going to be using a small group that is part of, part of the bargaining unit. We're going to um, first address this with our dispatchers um, just to start kind of that rule building. Um, yeah, do you own or will you own this software or is it The software itself will be downloaded. Um, it will be used across the board. Um, for example, our dispatchers will be able to log in, um, t actually clock in from their computers when they come on site. Um, so will we own it? We will not, we will own this particular, um, the particular rules that are built for us, yes. But this will be a, a monthly maintenance for us. An will this be an annual charge? Is this a one-time charge? The implementation itself is approximately twenty-five thousand. Um, that is a one-time fee. Um, that includes the timekeeping piece as well as the scheduling piece, and then we will have monthly maintenance, which will probably run us around forty thousand annually. Seems a little high, but uh, um, have you talked to? Part of the reason that we haven't went to um, a time that's part of the reason that we haven't previously went to a, to a timekeeping system um, because we've been doing it manually, but um, we have a lot of man hours involved in that process. So we, th we are very sure of the fact that it is going to um, alleviate a lot of man time and give us an opportunity to do a better job at it. Man time only is a benefit if it drops to the bottom line. So are you suggesting there's going to be payroll dollars saved because of this or not? If not, the it's yes, really absolutely. Um, I do agree that payroll dollars will be saved. And the, the primary reason is, again, we're doing, we, I, when I first was hired for the sheriff's office, I was doing the payroll um, myself. We have a ridiculous amount of um, overtime. And in this, I captured that this one piece of paper is being touched seven different times by I, by whether it be the originator, the supervisor, or payroll, filing, whatever it may be. That alleviates all of that time frame. So yes, there will be payroll dollars because this is all generated through the system. It would come to you, like if, if you were my supervisor, I would put in a, a request. It would, you'd get an email that you could review it and approve it. It's done, it's over with. So actually when that payroll is all approved, we do an export an Excel export, and that goes to the county just as it does right now. It doesn't actually to the, to the auditor system. Does that make sense? Did, did you talk to the auditor about? Yes, we did. Um, Jane and I have had conversations because we had actually talked a little bit about trying to implement Executime. We both kind of agree that it is not, for all of our different rules of the bargaining units, it's not going to be able to handle it quite yet. We have kept that kind of in the back of our mind that if this is rolled out and it is something that we get into and it's not an option for us or it doesn't work the way that we want it to work, that would be a backup plan. Um, but it's just not strong enough to address all of our different rules based upon our different employees in the units that they're involved in. I guess when I mentioned payroll, when I, when I think you were talking about better managing the overtime, mm -hmm. et cetera. I was talking about, are we going to eliminate any staff to offset this cost because of the time that's been involved? And that's my question. I don't think you really answered that question. So we currently have on the fiscal team, we have a, a fiscal coordinator and we have a payroll specialist. Um, my thought process is we actually just posted again for our fiscal coordinator or fiscal specialist. I apologize. We just posted for that. Um, we're going to hold off on the hiring for that because I think that we can alleviate that position primarily because of this. You understand conceptually what I I'm do. talking about? Yes. People talk about savings, but it's only savings if we Absolutely. Make it Absolutely. That's our thought process because the payroll specialist, the majority, 75% of her time is spent here just on the, the physical paperwork. This position you're talking about, is it a position that was currently open or is it a create a position that you're no, not No, it's a position feel. that is currently open that I don't think that we're going to need after we implement this. You don't think or you won't? We won't. And there won't be any effort to fill that position without involving us? I'm sorry? There won't be any effort to fill that position without bringing it to our attention? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? No. Nope. No. 
Uh, do you understand my the concern? I do. I think yes, I do. Expressed by more than one of us. Actually. Absolutely. I would in, in the future, it would be helpful. I think if a little upfront, sit down with each of us, perhaps, and explain it to us. It sure. might be more reassuring. So, just a thought. Thank you. I appreciate that. Vote. Vote on motion one eight dash five one eight, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution number 18-519, in the matter of approving contracts of sale and purchase for Russell and Helen Edwards and Stephen Tackard for the project known as Dell CR141.23. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Good morning, Commissioners. Rob Riley, Chief Deputy Engineer. Uh, these are uh, two right-of-way parcels we have negotiated uh, settlements on uh, for our East Powell Road project that uh, I've reviewed with you, and we're recommending approval of these. Any questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion 18-519. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 18-520, in the matter of authorizing participation in the ODOT winter contract 1819 for road salt. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. All we're talking about next year. <laughs> we are. Um, as, uh, as we have done in, in a number of years uh, in the past, uh, probably at least the last 10 years, we are proposing to uh, enter uh, into the ODOT uh, cooperative purchasing contract for road salt. Um, what we are proposing to do is purchase 14,000 tons. Uh, that is a higher number than in last year, uh, in previous years. Uh, but 3,000 of that, uh, 3,000 tons of that accounts for a new facility that we'll be building uh, later this year on Sawmill Parkway at Hyatt's Road. So that will be a 3,000 ton, uh, actually a little over 3,000 ton capacity facility uh, that we will fill this fall uh, once that that facility is done and I'll I'll be bringing that uh, bringing a construction contract to you uh, here in the next several weeks by the way um, but the uh, the contract uh, as in years past specifies a uh, that the the local purchasing partner must purchase uh, a certain percentage. Unfortunately, that percentage has gone to 100 percent. And so the, the tonnage we have uh, listed is the amount we are required to purchase. Uh, and then we are available, we are able to purchase 10 percent additional at the contract price. Uh, over the years, that number has, that range has shrunk. It used to be 80 to 120. You could purchase um, as little as 80 percent and up to 120 percent. That range is tightened basically at the uh, at the request and plea of the, uh, the salt vendors because uh, they need to know exactly how much salt to stockpile for this particular contract. So uh, again, we are required to purchase this amount of salt. Uh, I think it's the right amount of salt for, for us next year, not knowing what the weather holds, uh, but we can, we can handle this uh, amount of salt, uh, store it if we do have another light winter. And then if we do have a bad winter, I, I think, again, this will be enough because we're approaching the point now with our facilities that we will essentially have enough salt for the entire winter going into the winter. And so uh, we've, we're in a good position, probably a position that some other agencies might envy. Uh, and we can tolerate the, uh, there was a point actually this past winter where uh, vendors were not filling orders. Uh, they weren't able to fill orders because um, everyone was wanting salt. Uh, they couldn't get enough trucks. They couldn't get the production out of the mine. Um, so we, we hope to not find ourselves in that position in the future. I remember being at the township uh, and the, the same situation where we couldn't order. Well, it was very difficult to get salt. And then people were coming up with novel ideas. Like, I don't know, there was something. I don't know if it was salt. It was pink. Um, I mean, it was, I don't think it was beet beat the beat stuff but I mean it there isn't an expiration I take it on the on the salt if you buy ahead then you can use it the only future winners there's an anticoagulant they put in the the salt so it doesn't clump together uh, we rotate the piles so that the salt doesn't uh, get more than a few years old just so that anticoagulant doesn't uh, I don't know if it wears out but but we take care of that okay. how, how is the pricing on this contract Ralph? Right here. 
We do expect the, the, the price to go up, uh, that the contract will be bid starting, uh, I believe, later this week or next week. And so we'll, we'll find out what the number is. But based on the winter we had last year, uh, not just in Ohio, but the, the Northeast as well, uh, I, it's hard to imagine salt price going down. Township, townships, cities, villages participating again? Yes, uh, we will sell salt to the, the uh, for the most part, the same agencies we always have. Uh, we will we'll stockpile it and hold it for them and sell it basically at our cost plus a handling charge to, to cover our full cost of, of that salt. Okay. That's all I got. So, so right now, 100% Full is idealized, well, not ideal, but how close are we to 30% right now, 40% or? Uh, we have about, uh, I want to say about 4,500 tons under roof right now. Uh, our capacity uh, currently is about, um, if we clear out one of the, the, the facilities we use to hold salt grit, which is stone, uh, we can hold about 10,000 tons. Uh, with the new facility coming online, that will increase to about 13,000. Or if we, and we always do have some flexibility, you can get a piler to, to pile the salt higher. Um, we can go to probably 15,000 tons if we absolutely about need to. About 35 percent. That's about right. With the, with the additional facility. With the, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or comments? Vote on motion 18-520, Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 18-521, in the matter of approving the plat of subdivision for Olentangy Crossing, section four, lot 7291, division number one. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Uh, this is one of the commercial outlot parcels along 23, west side of 23, um, right near Lewis Center Road. Uh, this uh, outlot is being subdivided to create two two building lots, and uh, Platt has been all through through all the required county agencies, and we're recommending your approval. Any questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion one eight dash five two one, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Resolution number one eight five two two in the matter of approving right of way work permit summary sheet. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? We had uh, four permit applications. These are all uh, routine uh, utility permits in the right of way, and we recommend approval. Questions or discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18 522. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. We Thank have you. a few minutes before we may start our 10 o'clock reconvening of our public hearing so we can address administrator reports now. So he has, what, 10 minutes to talk, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Are you guys going to uh, say anything? He's gonna... <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty worn out from Mother's Day, taking care of all the moms in my life. So I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay. I really didn't have anything to report, so I think that'll give three and a half or three minutes and 20 seconds for each commissioner to, to talk. Is there no time is? Yeah. Mr. Lewis. I have nothing. <laughs> oh, no. The bird just shifted at five and five. You and I, we got to we gotta fill time here. Uh, well, maybe if I talk real slowly. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we had Morpsey last Thursday. Um, Commissioner Merrill got recognized by the chair for his uh, service at the polling location. He happened to be in one of the precincts yeah, I was he, at, so he uh, yeah. saw me there. So it was, it was a nice recognition. I guess the biggest thing to come out of Morpsey was that we closed, we, we, that, you know, the meeting ended 20 minutes early. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened before. So, you know, it was, it, there's a lot going on with, with all the different things. I didn't sense that there was any big action items or anything, but everything keeps moving along. Uh, tomorrow morning I'm meeting with the Preservation Parks um, uh, strategic planner. They've, they've hired a firm to do a strategic plan for preservation parks, and I'm meeting with them about um, my thoughts on where the parks is going, parks are going. So, uh, so anyway, that'll be interesting. There's, they've got their levy passed, and they've got a number of plans, so, so it'll be interesting to see, see how that progresses. That's all I got. One question. Did you see their recent brochure from preservation parks? The, of all the classes and everything? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That was really impressive. Yeah. They... They are. They're they're active. They've yes. got things yeah. going on 
every right. weekend and most week, you know, a lot of yeah. weekdays and a lot and of different kids locations. and kids all adults. ages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's it it is a an active organization that's getting a lot of support. Clearly. Right. Okay. So you got I seven minutes. Eight minutes. Eight really. minutes. Uh, regional planning is Wednesday morning executive committee. I'll be at that. And uh, I will bring up one. Th I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, when I worked the polls, a gentleman, and they're not, I do not know Gary's last name, but same as mine, so the first name is easy to remember. He said, I asked you uh, when you worked the polls last time about uh, direct billing or being able to pay uh, my bank account for my sewer bill. And uh, so I am. Uh, sent a text to Mike and and I looked within my files there was an email I'd gotten from someone else on that same topic so uh, I did ask Mike to look into that again I think it's uh, and I think he referenced Delco which must have some sort of plan like that I think that was what he mentioned uh, so, <coughs> so being able to pay online through your bank or something uh, I'm not sure exactly what our reasons are we haven't done it to this point but uh, Mike's gonna look into it and see where we are and what we can do. So I don't know if you have any comments, but I uh, think a lot of people use electronic bill pay and get their invoice online and pay online. So whether they pay online through a bank online bill paying service or pay directly online to the sewer department, I think is probably not a huge incentive to, to a lot of people. So it, it may not be a big, um, it may not be a big deal to to a lot of citizens who are already using electronic bill pay and it's just automatic so, well, so it could be taken uh, directly out of their bank account monthly or quarterly too yeah, yeah. sure and i think sure. that might have been what yeah. that's yeah. more the direction they were going. Been talking about okay we didn't get into detail because we work in the right. polls he just right. re, re asked the question he apparently asked you four years ago yeah, and, yeah i i was uh i have a uh, an update um we've been looking you know, we've been looking at, at this and, and, you know, it, there was some hesitancy in the past to, you know, we would basically have uh, uh, account number information for people to withdraw it, you know, directly from their accounts. Um, we've since talked with uh, the treasurer um, and I think we figured out in talking with First Commonwealth Bank that we can use um, the current contract um, that, that they're doing. Um, our next step was to take a look at and observe when the treasurer's office gets the automatic payments, how much handling of that information. Um, we also need to get with IT to make sure that the information, if we house it on our server, is very secure, obviously. Um, so I think we're in the process, Eric. I Hopefully, I think you've been working through it a little bit and maybe even have an action item to, to look at something now. Okay. I haven't seen any documents. Okay. It'll, come, it'll be coming back to you soon. Okay. So. I think one of the theories may or not be in practice make a difference to ones we end up having to add to their real estate. Is it possible people with this in place would uh, that be less of an issue? It, is, it may not have any impact at all, but it right. might. Right. Uh, and for convenience, a lot of people just like to have the automatic work on writing the check or whatever. Yeah. Um, they put you on the spot. Oh no, and, and I had one other thing. I I, I was uh, in light of Jeff's comment about the uh, um, preservation parks. Um, I've uh, had some dialogue with uh, their assistant director. Um, you know, it's a lot of developments, particularly as we're getting further north um, in some of the townships areas, the densities are, are really dropping, and there's a lot of open space. Um, that's that's happening in in a lot of those. I mean, even to a point where, like in a, a 200 acre development, there might be 50, 60 acres of of open space. And you know, I suggested that there could be a collaboration with some large scale developers to have parks in there, um, a la Evans Farm, because they their current practices they go in, appraise, and purchase those large tracts at market value, which I'm sure is a very large. Um, Anyway, so it was a, an interesting, uh, you know, the, the park system doesn't want to be 
maintaining all these small parcels, but there could be some large collaborative effort. So it was an, I interesting to see how that develops, and particularly with the development. Like that, so. Uh, we have three minutes left, Jennifer. You got three minutes. <laughs> I, have, first, you got I have no comments. <laughs> no comments. Well, she, I have one I think thing. She I went to go mention. get some batteries for oh, Eric's microphone. <laughs> I think it's working now. Oh, oh it's working. Oh. Mr. Lewis. Since, Jane. Uh, Jane's getting up to speed. Oh, <laughs> Bob. since Rob, Bob. Um, I did. Any baby stories? <laughs> yeah. right. For those listening, we have a hearing at 10 o'clock. We can't start before 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. I did have a constituent ask me about uh, it, and it's really an ODOT matter. And okay. I actually mentioned it to Frazan, too. Of course, Frazan still isn't at ODOT, so, you know. I, I told this gentleman that I check with our engineer's office, but, but anyway, as you're going south on 23 with the new arrangement, um, it's not clearly marked that if you want to continue south into Worthington that uh, you better get in another lane. Well, this gentleman uh, has gone on the outer belt twice. Head on Be 270. Yeah, head on to, and it is confusing. Yeah. I've... I uh, have observed that myself. I didn't get on the inner belt. I actually made it into Worthington, but I mean, it is confusing. So I don't know if you've heard anything about that or if there's anything that can be done. I haven't really heard anything, but uh, I, I've experienced the same situation. Oh, okay. uh, the first time I went through there, I was in the right lane right. as I thought I was supposed to be to get to 270 and you have to be in the, the second lane. But uh, I know it, it's, there's a lot to, Right. There's a lot to figure out as you're approaching that the first time. Right. I think it, and, yeah, and with all the traffic right there too, you know, you better be right. So uh, it does work a lot better. I have to give kudos to, to ODOT for uh, getting that project done. That was extremely difficult uh, working conditions and right. really tight quarters they were working in there at 23. But it's, it's working a lot better than it used to. My observation on that I was was going south and I told my wife I said there's no way to get on. 270, because it's kind of, but once you've done it, you know how to do it. So it, the it, next time I figure it out, this is how you get on. Right. But I can, uh, the first yeah, time is, yeah, the, it's, is it's, the challenge. It's confusing. Yep. Well, I, I'll ask, I'll take one more minute then and ask you about Smothers and Red Bank, since <laughs> that's all. <was> yes, <laughs> uh, that's, that's actually a good question, uh, good timing. Uh, we had a, a pre-construction meeting, uh, let's see, last week or two weeks ago, I can't remember. Um, the utilities are currently working out there, uh, which is the, the work you're seeing, uh, and some of the holes out there are for boring of underground utilities under the road. Um, it really will come down to how quickly the utilities finish as to when the road work will start. Uh, they're looking per their schedule uh, mid to late June, but it, that could get pushed to July. It just depends on the utility work. They don't want to start the road work while there's still utility work going on. Uh, and then, as I think I said, the um, deadline is a 60-day 60, 60 closure. There is an incentive provided for up to 15 days shorter than that, uh, so 45 days to, for the maximum incentive uh, okay. to get the road back open. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Great. I think we're good. Resolution number 18-523. Reconvening of public hearing for consideration of a petition filed by Jason Warner for the vacation of a never improved unnamed alley located east of County Road 605 near Hartford Road and County Road 605 in Trenton Township under the special procedures of revised code 5553.042. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion, vote. Vote on motion 18-523. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Resolution number 18-524, in the matter of approving for a specific occurrence, a suspension of Rule 3, Speaker Registration, Rule 4, Limitations, and Rule 7, Public Comment Procedures, from the Rules Governing Public Comment before the Board of County Commissioners of Delaware County, Ohio. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion, vote. Vote on motion 18-524. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Okay, we are now in the... Uh, hearing for uh, the continuation of the alley vacation hearing in Trenton Township. I'm going to just kind of walk through the 
outline of how we're going to proceed today. Um, this has to do with the uh, property located east of County Road 605 near Hartford Road and County Road 605 in Trenton Township. There's a sign-in sheet circulating in the room. We ask that you please sign it. Uh, we'll hear a report, a report from the county engineer or the county engineer's office, I'm not sure which. Um, we'll ask if there's any questions from the board. We'll hear from all those in favor of the petition for vacation. We'll hear from all those opposed to the petition for vacation. And during the testimony, you'll be asked to take a note. We'll continue back and forth. If new information comes up or additional people wish to speak, we'll take questions from the board. And if after listening to the testimony the report of the engineer, the board finds that the alley has been abandoned and not used for a period of 21 years, the board by resolution may order the alley vacated and the alley shall pass in fee to the abutting landowners as provided by law. Uh, with that, uh, I believe we're ready to proceed and county engineer or, or county engineer's office. All right, uh, commissioners, good morning. Rob Riley, chief deputy engineer. Um, we have reviewed, uh, as you recall, the last, uh, uh, the initial hearing, uh, we still had some work to do on getting the survey uh, cleaned up and, and to a point we're comfortable with. We are now uh, at that point, uh, so we are uh, confident that the survey uh, shows accurately the portion of the va of the alley that could be vacated uh, should you so choose uh, without jeopardizing or giving away any of this, the County Road 605 right of way. Uh, so we'll be retaining a, a small portion of that alley which uh, is a budding uh, route uh, 605. So uh, we have no further concern uh, regarding the survey. Uh, I will add that uh, after consideration, uh, I know you heard from uh, some residents last week, um, our uh, recommendation and opinion on this matter is we don't feel there's any uh, negative uh, to proceeding with the vacation of the alley. Uh, you heard from a resident uh, to the east of the intersection uh, about future access to the property. Uh, we understand that concern, however, uh, we. Uh, to use this access would require that the alley be improved to uh, uh, something higher than a driveway standard, uh, an alley standard. We, we don't really have an alley standard. We, we've uh, kind of come up with an alley standard going through the Evans Farm uh, development because uh, that, that's really one of the first uh, developments that has significant amount of alleys. Um, so the, the the use of that alley would not specifically be for that property. It would have to be improved and paved uh, for use by multiple properties. And so uh, we don't feel that there is a significant benefit to retaining this alley for, for any of the, the accesses to the abutting properties. There is a garage, an existing garage, in the alley right away or whatever you would call it. So yes. that would have to be torn down. Yes, there is. Or moved. So, but we are protecting the county and the township's interest is in your in your opinion. <coughs> yes, I believe so. Any other questions from the board? If not, uh, the board will hear from all those in favor of the petition for vacation. If anyone wishes to speak in favor. Jack Reynolds, an attorney with Smith and Hale. And Mr. Uh, Warner spoke last time. Uh, he's our... <laughs> Do you okay. solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the I, whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God? I do. Restate your name uh, and your address. Again, we'll Jack Reynolds, uh, Smith & Hale, 37 West Broad Street, Columbus, Ohio. And again, it's nice to be back up here, and I'm glad we worked out the issues with the, the description of the property. Uh, Jason is here again uh, if he wishes to testify, but more important uh, here this, this morning is Tom Martin. And he is the property owner we discussed that has his garage on the, on the alley. And he might want to step up and just say that it's certainly going to benefit him. Uh, but again, we appreciate you reconvening and we got Tom here. Uh, maybe he'd like to get up and say something about, you know, vacating the alley. You solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God. I do. 
Please state your name and address, please. Thomas W. Martin, 2758 North County Road 605, Sunbury, Ohio. Okay. You have the floor. I don't know what to say that you don't already know. This, the removal of the garage would greatly negatively affect me and uh, the value of the property and I do not want to tear down my garage and lose my alley. Or Rick, I recognize the garage probably shouldn't be there. Right, right, right. And I was asking, I don't know how it ever got approved to be there. That was kind of her question, I think, was how did, that, Holy cow. How did the mortgagor <laughs> miss that in the title search? Thank you very much. I'm confused. But at this point, I would love to have the township certainly express with me that they don't want anything to do with that alley and that we, the budding, all of us neighbors could have it. And I am so in favor with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it's your chance to you have anything else to add or you, is that conclusion? no just real simple i want i want to i want to right away <laughs> thank you very much tom anyone else who wishes to speak in favor okay is there anyone here uh, who would like to speak in opposition to the vacation if not are there any questions from the board If not, I would entertain a, a motion to uh, close the resolution number 18-525 in the matter of closing the public hearing for consideration of petition filed by Jason Warner for the vacation of a never improved unnamed alley located east of County Road 605 near Hartford Road and County Road 605 in Trenton Township under special procedures of revised code 5553.042. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-525, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. And I would ask the clerk uh, to please read the granting of the petition. Resolution number 18-526, in the matter of granting the petition filed by Jason Warner for the vacation of a never improved unnamed alley located east of County Road 605 near Carford Road and 605 in Trenton Township under special procedures of revised code 5553.042. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-5. Discussion? Oh. oh. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just would uh, say that I think it makes sense to vacate this alley. Um, clearly there's a structure there that is, is uh, an important one and nobody has any plans or any intent uh, and I don't really see anyone being harmed by vacating this alley. So, uh, so I, I support it, vacating yeah. it. I, I support it. Well, you'd think our system would have caught this. I don't know if you built it or it was there and you bought that with that garage in place. It doesn't really matter at this point, but you'd think I know. The system yeah. oh, yeah. for this yeah. ever happened. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, the, the mortgagor and uh, the title least, company that did that. This is an easy solution. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can you have more discussion? If not, no. vote. Vote on motion 18 526. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. With that, I believe we do have need for executive session. We do. Resolution number 18 527. <laughs> In the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of appointment of a public employee or public official to consider the purchase of property for public purpose and for pending or imminent litigation. So moved. Um, let me let me ask you one thing about the appointment. Did you say appointment? Yes. Uh, we'll be talking about appointment. This, okay. well, well, no, we'll be talking about appointment this morning, and you'll be talking about appointment later okay. after you recess and come back. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-527. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. We are now in executive session.
Resolution number 18-530 in the matter of adjourning out of executive session. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 18-530. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. There is no other business to bring before us. So we are adjourned. Okay, dokie. Ready. One thing to go, please. Wednesdays.